I'm doing some dry brushing here on the 6mm models and I've got a sort of four stage dry brushing that I'm doing. Uh, this is a striker and when I mean, the model is complete and the tyres and things are weathered it's had a sort of standard set of sand and gravel that was on there from the outset uh, this is a metal base that I've put it on you can sort of see the back metal base underneath there and I then glued, super glued the model on and applied the gravel right at sort of stage one really before any of the painting or base coats were added and I did use deliberately use slightly larger little bits of gravel just to give it that uh, variation so it wasn't too uniform of course it's going to have some static grass added eventually so it's going to hide some of that uniformity again so it will have a sort of varied static grass look to it with small clumps I use this um, material which is the sort of static grass that comes in preset clumps like that and I'll show you that later on I won't include that in this video because I'll be going on for too long I want to try and keep this short and sweet so here we are and the colours I'm using on this combination I'm starting with the mahogany stain from Life Colour which is what you can see that's on there already that's been pre-painted on and it's been let to dry in fact it's been let to dry for weeks because I've left these models halfway through uh, but there it is then in addition to that mahogany stain I've added an extra stage into what I've normally been doing uh, recently I'm adding this Bugman's Glow which is a sort of a, almost looks like terracotta or clay sort of colour and that's the first stage dry brush that goes on to the mahogany stain and gives it a slightly reddish tint because I wanted a sort of reddish almost Vietnam style red dirt look to the bases so that's going to introduce a slightly reddish tinge uh, then from there I leap to a colour which hasn't got any sort of red in it which is Hammerfall Khaki which is a much brighter sort of tan brown from Privateer Press Paints um, and then finally going back to this new dry style paint from Citadel so you'll get to see how that looks and I'm going to try and make this video short and sweet so here we go I have already um, I'm using for a start a size 6 graduate brush from De La Roni. here it is and it's kind of got a flat end and it's an old grubby one of mine as well but I like the flat end because that's great for the dry brushing and drawing the brush across the uh, across the, the gravel here you can get a lot in in one in one drag I've kind of pre dumped out some paints on here including the Bugman's Glow which is this one so I've got that I've actually got quite a, too much of it on the end of a brush really to be honest but what you do with dry brushing which I'm sure 99.9% .9 of you are familiar with is uh, you drag your brush across a tissue or in this case some kitchen roll kitchen roll is great actually because it has that texture in there it does, it does draw the paint off it and it also gives you the idea of how much is left on there for the dry brushing to work so having done that and I can see that most of the paint has gone I then jump to the actual model itself and this is quite tricky because I'm kind of doing this in reverse but I then drag it over and you can see straight away that reddish tone is coming out on the um, on the larger rock or larger piece of gravel flip it around and then in fact what I've then done is flip the brush around as well and that's that's instinctive now to me <laughs> after years of this I flip it around and I know that on the other side even though it's not very vis vis uh, visible I know there's more paint left on there um, for the dry brushing because I haven't used that side of this flat brush since applying the paint to it and really the, the main thing about dry brushing is it's, it's meant to be quick and and it's also not meant to be completely covering the paint underneath but you can see that reddish tone has come out all the way around there and it's given it that slight highlight that's quite subtle really 
don't forget these bits on the front now what I might do halfway through um, I'd like to try and get one base done with one brush load actually you can see in the background here I'm, I'm now loading up a little bit more just to be sure I go into these areas like under the back of this uh, section here and the front so stage one complete a very subtle reddish tone added to it and uh, now leaping on to the hammer for khaki so just a reminder again that was Bugman's Glow a base colour from Citadel's latest range and uh, now I'm using the hammer for khaki which I've got a pre-poured blob of it over here that's rapidly drying under the heat of the lamps so in fact I haven't even washed the brush out I know that I can wash this brush later and it just means that potentially you're getting a very slight blend as well of the last colour and the new colour even though there's hardly any on there uh, this is a much brighter colour obviously this Hammerfall khaki so it's going to stand out and I want to be a little bit more careful uh, that I don't uh, overload the the base colour that's on there even though the paint's going on quite dry I would actually leave longer between applying the next level on a dry brush because it just I just like to give it five minutes to dry I think really before applying the next level and when you're doing a large set of models like I am with these ones on a kind of a factory line it means that um, you've got an opportunity to let them dry because you can do all of one stage in one hit so I would do all of that Bugman's in one hit like I did with the mahogany stain in the first place so you can see now on the edge of that pebble gravel chip that the extra highlighted Hammerfall khaki is beginning to sort of pick out the edge a bit and uh, just means that it gives it that little highlight makes it stand out and you can see there the three tones on it almost you can see the mahogany stain at the back the Bugman's glow built up and then the little edge from the Hammerfall khaki of course I've hardly had to work for that really have I I've just sort of done this sort of subtle dry brushing and then it's beginning to pick out the base nicely obviously you're seeing this in super close-up vision here which is not how you'd see this on the battlefield anyway um, you'd be seeing it from much further away especially since it's a six mil scale model which is very fine and um, well I shall race forward now to the Citadel Tyrant Skull just to show you what these dry paints look like. I've shown these before actually but they they look like they're a kind of a, a strange makeup paste. They're very thick and goopy and when you initially open it you think you've been given a duff batch of paint uh, that's already pre-dried which wouldn't be surprising but I've already put a little tiny smear of that on here which I'm going to smear onto the brush. Now this is obviously you can see it goes on like a, a paste, a thick group of uh, gloopy paint. I don't want all that on there, so I'm going to brush that off as well, like I did before. And this will really give the uh, stronger highlight because it's the brightest of the colours yet. And I don't mind actually that it occasionally picks out a tiny piece of gravel more than the previous shades have. It just gives it a little bit of a stronger shade. I guess this is the easiest way because it's slightly larger on this tiny model. You can see that it picks out that edge even more. So, yep. Yeah. Just brought the gravel out that little extra bit. I mean when you're doing a base anyway you're not after like a masterpiece on these I've got a lot of these to do and obviously I'm taking my time on this for the video but I'd normally speed through this phase as fast as I could so there we have it that's probably the last that's the last bit of painting I'm going to do on that to bring that that mud out obviously it's going to have um, 
it's going to have some static grass as I mentioned before on there which is going to tone it all down so there it is very quick technique on on dry brushing this model and uh, just bring one up that's not been done so you can see what the base is like again the base look obviously it doesn't look uh, like there's much difference really you can see there that that's been brought out quite neatly this one hasn't had any work done on it yet did some sort of rusting on the back of this one on what looks like a fuel tank but uh, there you go I need to now do that for oh about 40 bases I think I've got before I then uh, give them a, a dull coat which I like to do before I put the static grass on because the static grass can go all messed up if you spray um, dull coat onto it especially at this scale because they're so small okay thanks for listening in